Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm here to help make your installation go smooth and trouble-free so you get the best performance out of your new carburetor. Well, before we get started, let's make sure you get the right size carburetor for your engine. We wouldn't want to take an 850 and put it on, say, a 289 or 302 Ford, and we probably wouldn't want to take a 500 CFM and put it on like a 502 Chevy. If you've got a stock to mildly modified engine that's less than 350 cubic inches, one of our 500 CFM carburetors work really good. If you've got 350 or larger, even on up to 454 cubes, our 600 CFM carburetors work really well. Our 750s and larger carburetors, those are really designed for highly modified larger cubic inch engines for real performance use. Now an unfortunate thing is a lot of people tend to over carburate their engines. And what that results in is a doggy engine off the line, poor gas mileage, and really bad throttle response. We want to help you avoid that. Well, let's look at some items that you might need that you might not have thought of. First, we'll start off with fuel filters. This one right here fits both fuel lines, both 5 16ths and 3 8 It's a handy little item to have. Uh, we also have a universal fuel line kit. And what's in here is some basic fuel line, a fuel filter, you've got some brass fittings and some hose clamps. So just a nice all-around general kit for your install. If you really want something fancy, we do have nice chrome steel fuel lines with a really nice anodized fuel filter here that uses the AN fitting. So if you're using braided steel line, this is the kit to get. Uh, we also have a braided steel line kit that you can purchase. Um, this one right here uh, go, connects from the fuel pump right on up to your fuel line. Another handy item to have. Uh, for those of you that like chrome, we have the chrome fuel filter. And this is also for braided steel line. And for those of you that are installing on a General Motors vehicle, we have this really nice chrome bracket here. What this is for is the kickdown cable and your throttle cable. Uh, we also have the kickdown lever uh, for the Ford applications and for Chrysler applications. Helps make your install much easier. A lot of cars have air conditioning. When you have air conditioning, uh, a lot of them have idle stop solenoids. And this is an idle stop solenoid kit that we sell. If you're going to replace the carburetor, it's a good idea to replace your idle stop solenoid too at the same time. Also, when you're installing on a General Motors vehicle, like an early vehicle, a lot of those are quarter jet carburetors. And if you're replacing a quarter jet carburetor with one of our Edelbrock carburetors, you want to be sure to get our adapter plate to go from a square bore to a quarter jet manifold. Now, another item to consider would be one of our signature fender covers. This just protects your paint from getting scratched or chipped while you're working on the car. Now, as far as tools go for a carburetor installation, pretty basic. All you really need is a, just a typical ratchet with an extension and a half inch socket. Of course, you're going to need a couple of screwdrivers for doing the adjusting and tuning. A uh, standard size and maybe a small one also. A gasket scraper might come in handy. Uh, that's only if you've got the gasket that's stuck to the manifold or if you have a little carbon on the old manifold that you want to get off. And a nut driver comes in handy for tightening and loosening hose clamps. Of course, you can use a screwdriver for that also, but a nut driver just ensures that it doesn't slip off the hose clamp and get you right in the knuckle. Before we get started, let's get familiar with some of the features and parts of the carburetor. This is your typical 1406 600 CFM carburetor. We can tell that because right up front here, there is a 1406 right in the corner here. What that tells us is the part number, and we can look that up, and that'll tell us what size the carburetor is. This is a 600 CFM with an electric choke. So we're just going to kind of go around the carburetor here and see everything. We have the throttle linkage over here. This will hook to your throttle cable or your throttle assembly in the car. This is the idle speed screw right here for your normal idle setting. Up underneath here, we have the high speed idle screw. And what that's for is setting the high speed, like in the choke in the morning, when it's, when it's running fast in the morning to warm the vehicle up. That's what this adjusts. We come back to the front. We have the air fuel mixture screws right here. And what these control is one side of the carburetor and the other side of the carburetor of the air fuel ratio. Only at an idle do these control. Anything above an idle, these don't work anymore. But this is what controls the air fuel mixture going into the motor just at an idle. The big port in the center right here is a manifold vacuum signal for your PCV valve. We like to put it on the front of the carburetor here so it has easy access. We do have a, also a manifold vacuum port on the back of the carburetor. Uh, we also supply you with a plug for this, but this is also for like power brakes or anything like that. We don't recommend the back being used for PCV valve. We'd rather have you use the front. So if you're only going to use a PCV valve, we'll go ahead and plug this off. We're back up to the front. We also have two other vacuum ports on the front. This is a little bit slightly higher than this one. If you see the, the height difference, this one's up a little bit. This one's above the throttle plates. And what that means is this is ported or what sometimes is called timed vacuum. Most distributor vacuum advances use ported or timed vacuum. So most of you would be plugging your distributor, if you, if you use a vacuum advance, into this port right here. This one right over here 
is manifold vacuum. This would be used for your automatic transmission to go down to your modulator valve. Uh, if you don't have an automatic transmission, a lot of times that'll get plugged off. We'll come over to this side here. This is the electric choke assembly. And of course, there's two electric fittings on there. One's a positive and one's a negative, which is just a ground. And then we have the fuel line. This is where the fuel inlet goes, right here. So you take your fuel line, plug it on there, and that comes from your fuel pump. Now this one comes straight out, and we supply a straight fitting with most of our carburetors. We do offer what we call a banjo fitting. This is a 90 degree banjo fitting. And what this does, instead of the fuel line coming straight off, it'll come also down so you can route your fuel line up in a different way. We just offer unique things like this for different applications. Now also included with your carburetor should be a little plastic bag, and inside the bag, should be an owner's manual. And this owner's manual has all kinds of tuning tips and calibration and pretty much all the information you need to know about your carburetor. Now mind you, our carburetors pretty much don't need anything right out of the box. They fit most applications and need minimal to no tuning at all. But just in case for performance reasons down the road or extra tuning that you want to do, all the information is inside the owner's manual. Also included in that same little bag, we have some vacuum fittings down here. In case you got to tee off and go to other vacuum uh, accessories, we have a plug in the, in the back, a quarter inch pipe plug. That's for the back of the carburetor. If you don't need that vacuum port, go ahead and plug it off. Uh, we also have some vacuum plugs for the front. If you don't have an automatic transmission or you don't have vacuum advance, you can plug the vacuum ports off in the front. Being that's an electric choke, we supply you with a wire, the ground wire, and a hot lead to activate the electric choke. Of course, we also give you the ball linkage right here to go on your throttle linkage to hook up to certain types of throttle cables and, and throttle linkages. And then we also include the gaskets. We give you one for the top of the carburetor and one for the base plate uh, for mounting. And then last but not least, we give you the little stud right here for your air cleaner. And you can just cut this to size and put your air cleaner on. Our carburetors, for the most part, come out of the box ready to go with little to no adjustment needed. But sometimes you run into applications where you do want some fine tuning and some calibrating. And for that, we have a calibration kit. And this comes with all the necessary metering rods, jets, and springs gives you a chart up on top to see what springs and what metering rods and jets you can use. And of course inside we have metering rods and springs and jets. And if you look in your owner's manual, open this up, they give you charts inside here to show you which jets to use and which metering rods. So it's really simple. So when you're trying to do this kind of stuff, just refer to your owner's manual. And we have lots of information in there just on this.